Well, good morning. Good morning. This week we have the church picnic at Kiwanis Park, right next to the Sheboygan Beer Garden. And it is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Church will be at 10 o'clock at the park. In case of rain, looks like it's going to be sunny and nice, so we won't have to worry about it. But if it does, it would be 10 o'clock here at church. But 10 o'clock this week at Kiwanis Park. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God, and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 29. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed when men give it to one who can read, saying, Read this. He says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should be, of, say, of its maker? He did not make me. Or the thing formed, say, of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having her cleansed by washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church, However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel reading for Sunday is from Mark 7, 1 to 13. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders, and when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, Jesus 
in talking to the scribes and the Pharisees identifies their hypocrisy. They had added all sorts of laws that they could follow, things that they would do that they could follow in order to make themselves look good. So uh, sometimes people mistake this, what, the disciples don't wash their hands, they need sanitizer and all the rest. It really was more than that, it was a ceremonial washing. So they had all of these things that had to be done in a certain way in order to be uh, uh, certified as being, you know, clean and not defiled. And um, they also had this tradition called Corbin, which is if you dedicated your, um, your goods that would normally be reserved for your, your mom and dad, um, or your care for your mom and dad, if you designated them Corbin, Corbin dedicated to God, then you were off the hook. You didn't have to love your mom and dad. You didn't have to care for them. In fact, you couldn't. It was dedicated to God. And you might think, well, it's dedicated to God. This is a good thing. Well, they would um, set apart that. Uh, it was an intention. And even if um, they had this intention, there were many who never followed through on that. But even if they had, um, they had replaced the commandment of God, honor your father and mother, with a tradition that was kind of a way of, of not so that they didn't have to follow the, the commandment of God, caring for their mom and dad. So um, it was kind of like a way to get points uh, for doing something that you hadn't done. Scripture has to do with love. Um, you know, the love of God for us in Jesus Christ, who gives everything he is and everything he has to us. Um, and he's not looking for, um, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, and and out for not doing something for us. He, he does it all. He leaves nothing to us with regard to our salvation. Um, he does it all and, and calls us then to love others as he has loved us with, without con condition. And um, so the tradition of, of calling things Corbin was really a way of, of getting out of the commandment of, of loving your father and mother. There was other ways that people do this too with regard to uh, he, you know, even today with, with regard to um, uh, husband and wife, you know, about um, with regard, we talked about that in the epistle lesson. And, um, you know, Jesus talks about how in the beginning God made them male and female um, <clears throat> and the two shall become one flesh. Well, the Pharisees had made laws about that too, um, even though they were to be till death parted them. They made, that's how God intended. They had made this tradition of is if you didn't like the way your wife looked or her cooking, you could divorce her. That was a, they, they made a tradition like that. Of course, it didn't go the other way, right? Um, all ways of not fulfilling the commandment. And the, the, the whole point of all of this, he calls them hypocrites. That is, they say one thing and do another. But we're, we're really the same. We fall short of the glory of God. We do not fulfill God's law. In fact, God requires us to, ful to fulfill it. That way, you must be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. So, really, it, this indicts all of us, um, the old Adam within us. So, what our Lord is doing is he's, he's seeking to turn us away from ourselves and toward him in repentance of faith because he is the one who does everything well. He fulfills the law every last uh, word of it, every last letter of it um, in his life among us, and now benefits us with these gifts. He, he gives these gifts to us. We have access to these gifts so that we can love others in him as he has loved us. Now, there's lots of traditions that are good traditions. Um, I think having a hymnal is a, a good tradition. Why? And especially this hymnal, because the focus is on the word of God. So if you were to look on Sunday in the hymnal in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the hymns that we sing that actually come from Scripture, and we'll let you know where they come. Um, or the liturgy will have um, the Scriptures listed. So we're practicing what we preach in terms of, of saying back to God what he has said to us in his word. That's a good tradition um, because it, it, it allows the word of God to flow freely among us. And so in church, what we do is we call on the name of the Lord, right? We read the word of God, we pray the word of God, we preach the word of God, and we sing the word of God. 
and this has its way in our lives then in love for others. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Yeah, well, I, I like it. The Pharisees had like some 613 ceremonial laws. Right. Yeah. And I knew it was um, in the 600s. We yeah, said 613. About this morning. Yeah. They, I think it was interesting. I was listening to this text about these different rules they had for washing. And I kind of think about it, I'm going to get in trouble here, about doing laundry. <laughs> that there are certain things that you should do and you shouldn't do. And, you know, like black should go with black and white should go with white. And the problem is when you mix it all together, it gets all yep. jumbled. I don't know about you if you have a dishwasher at home, but when I stack it, my wife always comes in and tells me what I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's a certain way to do it. There's a certain way to do it. No. Actually, it's the opposite in my house. I tell her. <laughs> <laughs> she does not a stack it. Hope she's not watching. But, but the, the point really, I, I think, you know, these, these, these rules, these traditions could be good. It's, of course. It's when that they're used in, in the wrong way for mm -hmm. salvation, right? And I think the connection here with the washing is in Paul's letter to the Ephesians when he talks about how he gathers his church together that he might wash her with water and the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish that we come to God's house to be cleansed of our sin and uh, there's always a talk in the church about how many sacraments there are one two or three right usually we talk about baptism and the Lord's Supper and our confessions Lutheran confessions talk about the possibility of confession and absolution being a sacrament itself. Really, confession and absolution is essentially turning back to our to baptism, baptism getting washed to be washed again. again. Yep. So every Sunday when we confess our sins, we are washed again with water and the word through those words of holy absolution. And so maybe my title should be come to the dishwasher, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe next time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a that's a good point. But and notice um, that he does the washing. Right. The washing that we do, we can't get the stain out. We can't get, we can't, the, we can't get the sin out. Try um, to blot it out. It's like yeah. you spilled coffee on your carpet. And your, or when you get blood on yeah, something. You, yeah, you, it, it, it just doesn't go out. Yeah, so, so I mean, it, only Jesus can, can do that. And he's the only clean one, right? Um, and he follows the law you know, perfectly as opposed to trying to make it you know, that's really what the Pharisees were trying mm -hmm. to do, trying to make it uh, doable right. um, by their extra laws. So they look good on the outside, that, but we're corrupt on the inside, just like all of us. And the great thing is our Lord, um, he washes us clean inside and out. And I think of, you know, when you, when you drink the blood of Christ, it's, it's cleansing mm -hmm. you, right? We're cleansed by the blood of Christ. Um, and that's a, a really good thing. So um, there's lots of good traditions, too. Mm -hmm. um, I was in chapel this week I I talked to the kids how they've had traditions um, handed down to them so I, I started by saying you have had this tradition of praying in a certain way come Lord Jesus be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed amen I also talked about at night let's see if Thomas knows this one um, um, at night um, the uh, now I lay do you know that one not to sleep Yep. I, pray I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I, I should, should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And this I yeah. ask for Jesus. For Jesus' sake. You had that at I had it memorized because I listened to Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but notice how, you know, these that's a good tradition because it's accessing <clears throat> praying to God for the blessings that He provides. So um, join us uh, this Sunday uh, as we gather together in, in his name to hear his word, to receive uh, the forgiveness of sins, to have him wash us. Right? Is there a dunk tank or not? No, right. no. If they decided not. not to do so that. So we can't be washed. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> we'll be washed by the blood yeah, of the Lord. All right, okay. All right, with that in mind, uh, um, we have a hymn. Um, and I thought, oh, bless the house would be a good hymn to sing. Um, where Jesus uh, Christ is all in all. That's really what it's all about. Uh, Christ coming to us to, to forgive our sins, renew our faith in life. We could do all five. That's sure. Okay. Oh, bless the house, whatever befall, where Jesus Christ is all in all. A home that is not wholly his, how sad and poor and dark it is. Oh, bless that house where faith is found, 
and all in hope and love abound. They trust their God and serve him still, and do in all his holy will. Oh, bless the parents who give heed unto their children's foremost need, and weary not of care or cost, may none to them and heaven be lost. Oh, bless that house, it prospers well, in peace and joy the parents dwell, and in their children's lives is shown how richly God can bless his own. Then here will I and mine today a solemn promise make and say, Though all the world forsake his word, and my house will serve the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.